the first you know intelligent human civilization on this planet you you look at the mythologies of a number of of civilizations uh, uh, within recorded history on on this planet and they ha- all have stories about great civilizations that existed before them and uh, and when i say great civilizations i mean the description sounds suspiciously like high technology civilizations and then for whatever reason you know war natural cataclysm uh, what what have you this civilization was wiped out and uh, with only a few pocket remnants that then taught the survivors who at that point had, had basically you know devolved back into uh, stone age uh, living uh, taught uh, the 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 remnants of of human life all over again you know taught them agriculture things like that and uh, uh, the 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 ancient uh, the, the the story of Atlantis is is one of these stories and uh, Atlantis is just you know, really one of the more uh, apparently recent uh, cataclysmic events that destroyed a uh, a higher technological society on you know, on this planet. So, I mean, yeah, I would say that there have been more than several reboots uh, on this planet. And who knows, you go further back than that, who's to say, I mean, you know, why, uh, why, why, are, why would humans be the, the only pinnacle of intelligent uh, evolution? You go far enough back, there could be uh, ancient civilizations with uh, some other intelligent species who knows <laughs> that is scary to think about you know i posted up on my show's website and on facebook here i think uh, a couple days ago that um a picture of antarctica that mary joyce sent me of uh well it shows an outline because it's you know the ice is melting so fast it shows like well, James, how could you describe it as a medieval castle, uh, but not the castle, but the remains of a medieval castle? It laid out like a castle would lay out, and here it, it's it looked, yeah, it looked like the foundation of it. Like you just said, it looks like the foundation of an ancient castle. Actually, if you look at the foundations of some ancient castles in UK, it really did look like that. I, I got to say, it did. Yeah, it was very interesting, and and that itself, when I looked at that, I kind of went and when she gave the coordinates, and I went and looked it up on Google, and there it was, and it, 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 it I got a funny feeling in the next few years, well, maybe we might even find Atlantis, or, because I, if it do, did exist, because the way Antarctica is melting out now, it, it's surprising what any day now, we might find a major uh, fine. But if we do find a major uh, fine, how long will it be before it's suppressed? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, uh, Antarctica is the largest landmass on the planet that has yet to be uh, properly, even completely, uh, uh, explored. It's uh, it's practically impossible currently because you know, the, the 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 mass of of ice over all of it. So there could be practically anything uh, underneath all of that ice. And I mean, don't forget that Antarctica hasn't always been located where it where it has. I mean, it's that's that's really uh, uh, in geological time. Just a, uh, a recent event. Uh, at one point, Antarctica was uh, had a very temperate climate. Uh, so, you know, if if there was an intelligent civilization that existed on this planet even before uh, humanity crawled out from little holes that our, our distant ancestors lived in. Uh, Antarctica would be a perfect place for them to have developed and have remained completely unknown to us. Uh, you know, how are we going to find it? 
currently at least. <laughs> well, give it about another 10, 20 years. I got a funny feeling. Uh, every every couple months, things are popping up, and it, it's really surprising. It makes you, you know, you look at it, and you're finding out it was, you know, at one point a very livable place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and I hate I hate the reason that uh, that that you're saying uh, that we may be able to uncover these secrets because of the 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 rapidly melting ice sheets uh, uh, in Antarctica. Um, hopefully, there will be uh, scientists and explorers around when it does finally completely melt to discover this stuff. Well, you know, I just start thinking really hard. It hit me the other day. You remember Water World, the movie? Oh, yes. Yeah, it just makes me wonder, is, is that what we're going to end up here because, you know, just change the subject a little bit. Over in the North Pole, there's a big ice shelf that has developed a crack. And on this ice shelf is about the size of the United States. And if that breaks, they're talking about a sea level increase immediately of 35 feet. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I mean, I I don't think that there there is enough water locked up in the uh, uh, the Arctic and, and Antarctic uh, regions that if they all melted would would completely uh, flood the planet. I mean, you know, to to the point that uh, it would be a, a water world type of of situation, but um, it wouldn't be comfortable at least not by our current standards <laughs> well so it'd be, it'd be, i guess it's I, go ahead, go ahead. It, I, it'd be horrible if you're living in montana and you, you you step off your porch and you're looking at the ocean yeah yeah well that's what i was going to say maybe it's time to start uh, uh buying the rights for seashore uh, property in uh, utah and montana and places like that <laughs> No, one of my friends, you know, keeps jokingly where he lives in Florida. I can't think of the name of the town. I'm trying to think, but it's right off the, you know, the ocean. And he said that every time the tide, you know, comes up, he said the manholes like blow off and water just shoots out of them because of the pressure. Well, going back to the uh, the, the the time travel subject that that we started out on. Now I I put I I put no veracity into these stories, you know. But uh, last year you saw this uh, uh, proliferation of of uh, people claiming to be time travelers uh, appearing on on YouTube. Uh, I I sincerely you know tell people yeah. don't don't believe in this stuff. However, one of the more popular subjects that they bring up. Is that in the uh, in the future the world is going to be completely different because of uh, the massive flooding caused by uh, uh, climate change? You know, one of these guys even went as far as to produce a picture that showed supposedly uh, Los uh, Los Angeles under about uh, you know, 100 200 feet of water. Uh, now, uh, you know, if you if you were going to come up with uh, a hoax YouTube channel. You know, climate change, massive flooding—that's that's a pretty that's a pretty easy one uh, to come up with. But it's unfortunately, in in my opinion, uh, if if we don't do anything, and it may be too late already, then uh, those spurious predictions are probably going to come true. Yeah, so maybe they they were from the future because you just think about it. I mean, at least what they're predicting about will be coming true. And 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 I don't know at this point, seriously. Yeah, I I really wish they could. And if there is a way to go forward in time, I don't know if I want to go forward. I really don't because I don't. The way things are now, it's only going to get worse going forward. I would want to go back maybe a hundred years. Well, let's let's go back seventy years. The hundred's too far. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, I started to say if if I was going to go back a um, uh, uh, hundred years, I I would make sure that I brought back with me enough uh, enough information that I could do a uh, um, a Back to the Future scenario and and buy 
<laughs> you know, like stocks and bonds and, and horse race uh, results and anything else possible to at least make my uh, my living back then uh, as comfortable as possible. Yeah, but what would the people think about you if you were winning on the lottos or not lottos, but on the stock market? You bet on horses and won all the time. People would start wondering about you. <laughs> well, that's that's where shell companies come from, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were. Now, James, it sounded like you had a question because I heard you go ah ah a couple times. Oh, oh, I was going to say, don't forget with you know them time travelers when they had those pictures. The pictures were with modern technology of today taken in the future. Remember that? We've been talking about that a couple times, Gary, about these pictures on YouTube and stuff. Why are they using today's technology to take pictures in the future? That's what I was going to Why can it be a of. hologram or something, you know, realistic? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if, if, if they had the ability to invent time travel, why are they still uh, uh, using a, a photo paper? Uh, to, to show the, to show their pictures, whereas uh, you know the the holographic uh, technology. I mean, heck, we've got uh, right now uh, we've got some uh, uh, primitive versions of, of of holograms, and probably within the next fifty years, you know, we'll see a big explosion uh, uh, when it comes to holographic uh, forms of of entertainment. That that may be the next big thing. Because uh, I'm, you know, I'm always trying to think about what's going to be that that next big uh, uh, societal change, you know, uh, that that that's going to happen within our lifetime, or or maybe you know, our our children's lifetime. I mean, you you look back, okay, you go back 30 years ago. Could you have even have conceived the way the internet and personal computers and cell phones? have changed our society to such an extent 30 years ago uh, that i mean there was a, we had no concept of any of that stuff that's not that long ago you know 30 years from now what's going to be that next thing that next big thing that uh, uh our children now are going to be our age and they'll be like i don't understand this stuff at all you know and their kids are like oh don't be such a funny <laughs> kind of like our kids now are trying to explain to us how to uh set up apps or whatever on their phones <laughs> oh yeah or how to do a website for the show uh I, exactly, I, exactly. but it, can, can you imagine i hate our technology as it is, but I see the future, you know, instead of getting on computers, there'll be a hologram, you know, you sit there and you just, you know, merge with the program and it's it either fed to you, you know, uh, with eye contact or, you know, through, to your brain. That's what I think the next thing is going to be. But, you know, the invention, I hate to say it, of the Internet and cell phones has really ruined a lot of marriages. I will say that husbands, you know, like they just get married and the wife is passionate and wants to make love. But no, her husband's out there playing some game on the com on the computer. And that's more important. Or you're in, in bed. Wait a minute. I can't do anything now. I, I got all these text messages I got to read from Facebook. I mean, that's how bad our technology has gotten. And it's scary. Well, I always, you know, I kind of look at it like, I mean, I remember, I remember how I was when I was a kid when it came to uh, television. You know, I loved, I loved television and, and my parents, you know, they they were like, oh well, you know. I remember when I was a kid. I mean, we were lucky if we had a radio, that, that sort of thing. So it's just like every generation seems to have its own uh, uh, jump in technology that infuriates the older <laughs> generations. Uh, but uh, you're you are correct, though, Gary. And I mean, not only uh, what you were saying when it comes to say, like you know, uh, a personal interactions being you know interrupted by technology you have uh you know say like the whole you know magazine and and book publishing uh, industry uh, music things like that have been uh, brought basically to their knees uh, because of the internet and, and and because this this whole generation thinks that you know uh, you don't have to pay for anything you just get online and find it it's and, free. Uh, you know, it's uh, like I said. You know, look look at uh, uh, magazines. Uh, there's uh, uh, probably 
less than 20% of the magazines being published uh, that there were uh, 30 years ago. Oh, yeah. That's a, well, Mad Magazine bit the dust. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, that upset. 